And we are live! What's up, vapers? Thanks for checking out Daily Vape TV. My name is Nick, and today we are going to be doing a live vlog. Yes, a live vlog. This is probably not going to happen ever again, and maybe until next Halloween or something like that. But, yes, we're here in the studio. We've got the normal topics to talk about. I'm going to wait for a few more people to jump on here before we really get rolling. But I will be covering a number of different things as we typically do. We're going to talk about some advocacy and some news topics that came up. We've got a uh, brand new story that just came out today, I believe. Uh, a new announcement from Scott Gottlieb from the FDA. Um, and we're going to talk about a few other things that I've got going on. I've got a few news stories that I have on my website that I wanted to talk about. And uh, for those of you that don't know, website dailyvape.tv make sure you guys bookmark it i do uh some posts on there from time to time like some news and stuff like that i've also got um uh what was i gonna say uh news posts i've got merch for sale if you want to pick up some merch i'm going to be coming out with some new shirts pretty soon going to do kind of a a fall winter kind of line and uh it's gonna have like things that'll pop in and pop out and i'll have some of the staples i feel like i'm going to keep the Fresh Build Friday um, hoodies on there and, and long sleeves and t-shirts and stuff because who doesn't love the Fresh Build Friday hoodies and stuff? I know James Franklin does. What's up, everybody? Let's just quickly run through chat real quick. <clears throat> We've got Punk Rock Pirate. We've got Ryan Rodel. I'm sorry, I'm going to murder your last name, man. Dire Thing. We've got Standard Vapor. We've got Frames Janklin Vapor. If you guys are unfamiliar, make sure you go check out Frames Janklin Vapor. He's an awesome dude. His channel is awesome. And he's a great newer reviewer. So make sure newer reviewer. There you go. There's a tongue twister for you. Uh, Frames Janklin, or James Franklin, as we like to call him, um, or James MF and Franklin. Um, as most of us call them. Oh, crap. We've got Echo. Hold on. Let's see. How do I do this? Uh, hold on. Bear with me. Uh, okay. Let me know if we still have audio. It says my, my little mixer thing is going up and down. Uh, yeah, but that should be all right. And let me see, you know, that's the one thing I forgot to check is my settings, my output. Oh, video bitrate, 100, yeah. Totally forgot to check my bitrate before I started doing this. Hopefully that's a little bit better. Let me know, let me know in the, the chat box there. I'm, I'm watching chat right now. Let me know if that's a little bit better for you guys. I hope it's less choppy. Good, 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 everyone's... Everyone's saying all right, and I do apologize if the video quality isn't as you know spectacular as I can. I'm not hardwired or anything. I'm just on my laptop at the shop, uh, at the studio. Um, but yeah, so we've got not so scrawny Connie's full savage. Jeremy's in here. Josh Fianna, Keegan Batcock, uh, Jesper Ad Anderson. Um, I, I think I already mentioned Dire Thing. If not. Shout out to you, Vapor Swaggins, slow mode. I'm sorry, so I put slow mode on so I can at least kind of keep up with it. I only put a 10 second limit on it, so relax. Poon Sauce McNasty, um, who else we got in here? Brian Enoch, and that's all I can see right now. Rattle, okay, my bad, dude, my bad. I'm, I do apologize for that. Uh, I am notoriously bad at last names, so. <clears throat> with that we've got some news and advocacy let's go ahead and bring up the news and advocacy thing here and where did i put it uh, i have it open on my phone but not on my uh, on my browser here i think it was greg Connolly that posted it today uh i could be wrong I could be wrong gregory Connolly. I'm just going to read it off my phone because it's I have the page already booted up here. Um, there we go. Press announcement. FDA statement. Statement from FDA Commissioner Scott Gottlieb on meetings with industry related to the agency's ongoing policy commitment to firmly address the rising epidemic. I think he used the word epidemic again. 
Uh, rates in youth e-cigarette use. Why do they have to use the word epidemic? Please tell me why. Please, 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 if anyone knows. Uh, so yeah, um, this is October 31st, 2018. And this is the latest statement from Scott Gottlieb. I'm gonna, I read the whole thing earlier and basically the first paragraph is just basically kind of rehashing on what he's already been doing, kind of saying how he's devising a comprehensive plan to combat the epidemic of youth use of e-cigarettes, blah, blah, blah. And then he goes on to basically say that he met with the top five uh, companies that are, that make up 97% of the closed system market. And he says he met with Altria Group Inc., Jewel Labs Inc., Reynolds American Inc., Fontam Ventures, and Japan Tobacco International USA um, to basically ask them what they're doing and what they can do and what the FDA can do to combat the youth use of e-cigarettes. Uh, Overdrip says no orange and black. I mean, I've got orange back here. So there, there's this is my orange. And then I've got like black and white. I don't know. I tried. I tried. I don't own anything orange. That's the other thing. Um, so yeah, it says uh, these have been constructive meetings. The companies acknowledge the serious public health consequences associated with use, youth use of tobacco products. They presented thoughtful proposals consisting not only of what steps they would take themselves to restrict youth access to uh, to and appeal of these products, but also steps that they think the FDA and other policymakers can take to reverse the trends in youth use of e-cigarettes. Some stated explicitly that preventing youth use must be a priority and that any potential benefits of e-cigarettes for adult smokers cannot justify significant increases in youth use and addiction. Uh, see... That's where it starts breaking down, in my opinion. They they really just kind of went downhill from there. I feel like the companies are basically just sucking up to the FDA at this point. They're not really saying, oh, well, you know, we're, we're not doing anything wrong, blah, blah, blah. They're basically saying, we know, we know, we're sorry, and we'll, we'll try to do better, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, really, is it that necessary? Uh, is that necessary groveling to... The, the government that, you know, is in charge of their, uh, of their product. <sighs> Not really. I mean, if anything, stand up and fight for what's right. And unfortunately, these companies are more interested in profits than about adult smokers. So, um, yeah, and basically the following paragraphs are not, there's really no new information here. It's stuff that we already knew. Um, and it's basically just saying how they met with the top five companies and they both agreed that there's a, a problem and they need to fix it. So we didn't really get much out of this statement here, unfortunately. Um, there, there's been uh, little things here and there in this, these paragraphs that say things like potentially restricting flavored uh, tobacco products to stores that have better enforcement of age verification uh, and that kind of leads me to think that they might want, you know, vape shop owners to get ID scanners or something like that in order to make a purchase, which, you know, wouldn't necessarily be a terrible thing in my opinion. Um, but it has to be rolled out smoothly and simultaneously. And there's no real way to do that, unfortunately. So it's going to be very difficult and they're still going to have to do the enforcement rounds where they're going to have to send people in and make sure then they have the ID scanners. And there's still ways around that as well. Um, so the, and they, they actually mentioned in here, in the actual um, uh, paragraphs of this, this um, new statement uh, about... Uh, where, where was it? I'm trying to find it here. <clears throat> they mentioned uh, about adults buying teens vapor products or teens, you know, uh, of age teens buying vapor products and then selling them to younger people, um, which is a big part of the problem. Um, so I don't know. I mean, there's not a lot of good things <laughs> in the latest FDA statement. There's definitely a lot of just repetitive kind of talk and that's not necessarily 
a terrible thing, but at the same time, it's not a good thing. It's not a step in the right direction. It's just kind of spinning the wheels. And I feel like that's what's going on. That's what's going to be the status quo. And unfortunately, it's not looking too good for the industry as a whole, I feel like at this point, because uh, I truly feel in my heart that we're going to end up with just vape shops and they have to have a lot of ID scanning and, you know, steps in place that will prevent kids from getting their hands on these products. But at the same time, I feel like that's going to turn some people away because not everybody has a tobacco shop in their backyard or, or a vape shop, you know, a, a, an adults only brick and mortar vape shop within driving range. You know, some people live way out in the country and they just can't make it down to a vape shop and restricting online sales is going to prevent those people from getting what they need on a weekly basis or a daily basis. So it's, it's not looking great. It's really not looking great, but hopefully we can turn things around a little bit with public perception. Um, I'm really banking on the fact that we can normalize vaping. And actually that kind of transitions well into the next topic. We've talked about this on Vape Stew before, but I wanted to touch on it myself. Uh, South Park, South Park covered uh, vaping and as one of their topics for an episode. And a lot of people say, oh, ban South Park, or not ban South Park, but boycott South Park, blah, 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 blah. And my whole theory is it's a cartoon, it's satire, it's adult humor, and it's not meant to be taken super seriously. So uh, I don't really have a, that much of a problem with it. I think it's not a great look for our industry, but it's it's like kind of a, one of those half truths where you have to just kind of own it and just be like, yeah, <laughs> you know, I mean, kindergartners aren't using jewels, but it is a thing that young people do. It's a problem. We understand this and we're trying to prevent it. But I don't feel like it was the worst thing to ever happen. And as far as I'm concerned, it could have been a lot worse. And I've heard, I haven't seen the Family Guy episode that covered or touched on vaping or anything like that, but I've heard it was worse. I'm going to have to check that out myself just to kind of, <laughs> just to kind of check it out and see what it's all about. But I feel like this, the South Park episode wasn't that bad. I, I personally don't think it was that bad. Um, let's see. Uh, not so scrawny Connie actually asked a good question. She says, does this make you afraid to put out hardware? Hardware, I don't think is really the number one uh, concern of the FDA right now, because in my opinion, they don't know about 90% of the hardware. They don't even know about it. So I really don't think we're going to have that much of an issue as far as that goes. Um, but it's the e-liquid. E-liquid, they're going to crack down on e-liquids super duper hard. They're going to restrict flavors to vape shops. They're going to prevent, um, you know, you can't just go out and buy any old e-liquid at a convenience store or anything like that. It's going to be an adults only thing where you're going to have, you know, probably no line of sight to the actual products, very similar to how a lot of, um, you know, the UK does it, where you can't see inside the store. You're going to have to have those window blockers or whatever. So it's going to be interesting to see what they actually do, but it sounds like that's the kind of, you know, direction they're going to go in. And that does kind of worry me. Um, but yeah, as far as putting out hardware, I don't think it's going to be that much of an issue because they don't know about the hardware. They barely know about the second generation e-cigarettes, which are like the open systems, like the, the egos and stuff like that. I mean, I don't know. I don't think it's, it's a huge problem. Yeah. Uh, punk rock pirate says family guy did too. Uh, I've seen, there was like a little tiny spot on one of the family guy episodes. It wasn't really, uh, a, a huge deal in there. I don't know. At the end of the day, it's just a cartoon. It's satire. It's comedy. It's not the end of the world. It's not nearly as bad as NBC or ABC or CBS or any of those big news stations running almost attack ads on, on the vaping industry. <clears throat> um, so yeah, another thing is speaking of TV and media and that kind of thing, how many of you out there have seen the Truth Initiative ads, the latest run of Truth Initiative ads? Those are really, really 
going after us. Uh, they weren't really going after vaping for quite a while. Uh, I mean, it was only probably a year or two ago that I started seeing little things on the Truth Initiative website about vaping. And ever since then, though, they've been pretty darn aggressive. And like, you know, Joel from uh, Vape Stew, Mr. Just Right, says he doesn't want, like his son hearing the word dick on television when his kid is watching cartoons. And I do not blame him for that whatsoever. Um, you know, and that's the other thing is like they make these silly, like youth oriented sort of like, puppet show uh commercials or adver not advertisements uh you know psa's what have you and here they are like you know saying jewels are bad but it's almost like they're appealing to kids with the puppets and then they're saying jewels are bad don't use a jewel i don't know i i don't really get it i don't get the message i don't know what marketing director decided that was a great idea but i think they should be fired for it for sure uh, as far as like the truth initiative in general, I mean, for those of you that don't know, I forget who told me this last time, but um, thank you for uh, whoever it was on Vape Stew that said that um, truth initiative is sponsored by Johnson and Johnson, and that is a big thing. That is a huge factor because Johnson and Johnson is a massive chemical company. They make all sorts of products and they also have quit smoking aids so of course they're going to try to fund these little projects that attack something that basically will make their product obsolete <laughs> so for us it's like you know what are you going to do you know they're, they're going to do what they're going to do we can't stop that unfortunately we can't do anything because they can come out with you know all of the, their psa's and basically say whatever they want, but we cannot retort to that. We can't go and, and respond except on social media and that kind of thing. I mean, um, another thing that we talked about on the stew that I'm gonna re-mention here on my channel is the fact that whenever you see an anti-vaping story, don't click the share button. Don't copy and paste the link, just screenshot it on your phone or your computer or whatever you're looking at it on and share the screenshot because Every time you click that share button, every time that link is clicked to their website, they get big time bumps up in the search queue in uh, for the Google Analytics. So please do not share those anti-vaping stories. That only gives them more power. And it's like I always say, if you pay less and less attention to it, it will just eventually go away. But Hitting that share button is not helping us one bit. It's helping them. So screenshot it and then post up the picture, but don't share it. It's definitely not good. And Grave Digger says, vaping will never stop. Well, as long as we never stop fighting, it will never stop. You know, the vote, votes are coming up. Uh, that's another thing I wanted to talk about today. I've got a lot on my mind, as you can tell, guys. Um, you know, it's time to vote. It's time for, what is it, the midterm elections? Something like that. Oh, I can't remember what it's called. Oh, crap. I'm going to get a killed for that one in the comments. But, um, yeah, make sure you guys get out there and vote, at the very least for your local state governments, because some things in there can really matter. Uh, some people that have a lot of power that are being voted for in this round of elections uh, my state's attorney general, we're looking to get a new attorney general in Massachusetts. So that is something that we've had to deal with in the past. I've had to actually go physically to the attorney general's office to try to shoot down uh, her new set of laws that she wanted to put forward. Luckily, we did that and we were able to uh, get those uh, erased. But it was a struggle. It was a fight. We had to have, you know, 40 people show up to the office at, for a, a, like an open forum kind of thing. But that is definitely uh, um, important. Uh, attorney generals have a lot of power in your state. You, you guys don't may not necessarily realize how much power an attorney general has. Attorney general can propose a law and just almost kind of sneak it by. It goes a, uh, in front of a couple of committees and then it becomes a law. 
Uh, but it's almost more powerful. The attorney general is almost more powerful than your state senator in a lot of ways. Um, and they can also sneak by a lot of bills and laws and stuff like that. And it, it's we were lucky we even caught the attorney general's addition, you know, to the to whatever she was pr uh, proposing at the time. Um, but, yeah, they can kind of get away with a lot of stuff because she proposed a whole set of laws. I think we had about two or three days notice to uh, to to get together and, you know, gather up the troops, basically, and head to Boston for that one. Um, yeah, so that's a lot of news. I've got, I think, one or two more stories here. <clears throat> Here I got a story that I just put up today on my site. It says vape shop owner considers suing Gallatin, Colorado Health Department, I believe. That's, uh, I did read this article earlier. Um, so yeah, basically uh, this, this town or city in, in Colorado is considering uh, an indoor vaping ban. And this, what is it? Uh, crap, I can't remember. I read it today and I can't remember. Um, it was a health department. They're considering an indoor vaping ban, and this vape shop is considering suing them if he can't get it shot down because it's going to hurt his business. And that's kind of an interesting theory. You know, it's like there's a lot of these indoor vaping bans all over the place, but you never see someone really take action against it. Um, truth be told, there was one in my hometown uh, a couple years ago, and the hometown vape shop, the one that's in town, uh, fought it. <laughs> they actually had the fire department come into the shop they had a bunch of people blowing clouds everywhere and they had oxygen meters and you know air quality testers and everything like that going and they basically proved that there was no difference from outside air to air in a vapey vape shop so it, they had really had no choice but to say well all right you kind of shot down all of our arguments that we put forward so you, I guess you can vape in the vape shop. So that is one tiny semblance, tiny little speck of a success story as far as that goes. But this guy uh, is, is actually considering suing his local health department for it and more power to him. You know what? If he can't get it shot down uh, by, you know, just showing up to meetings and things like that, then he's actually going to go ahead and sue. And, uh, you know, America. <laughs> but it's it's pretty bad. It's pretty bad that we have to go that far, you know, just to be able to vape in a vape shop. And I think it's kind of ridiculous. So let's see. Um, any other news that we should be talking about? Um, oh, I should probably mention the 24 hour live stream because um, that was last weekend, right? Um, yeah. I think it was. Oh my god. <laughs> I literally can't remember. Um, so yeah, Ken Vaping with Ken did a 24-hour live stream on his channel to raise money for the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention, uh, along with Michelle Lynn Del Dime Mods. Big, huge, massive shout out to both of them for organizing this whole thing. Uh, they also had Frank Wolf involved with it. He was helping set up and a few of the other stooges as well. Uh, big shout out to the Stooges. You guys are awesome. Um, and yeah, we, we I was on it for a couple hours here and there. Uh, there was special guests like um, Ruby Roo was on, uh, TVC, Vaping Fagan, uh, ST Vapes, of course, Stan and Joel. Uh, we had Oh My Lanta, Poon Sauce McNasty. We had Vinyl and Vapor so many names tony b we had all these guys on uh, all for a great cause and it was a really great great time we raised a ton of money we raised over thirteen thousand dollars it's looking like i think michelle said one of the latest figures was either closing in on fourteen thousand or at fourteen thousand uh which is amazing so in 24 hours vapors came together and raised that much money for suicide prevention and awareness and Wow, I am just completely blown away. Uh, you know, Jay Hayes got the hazers to just throw money into the, the mix there. And God, I cannot just express how grateful I am to everyone that was watching the stream. 
uh, everyone that participated, everyone that helped and just had any sort of hand in setting the whole thing up and just everyone that watched, you know, there was a few people that watched for pretty much the whole entire thing, which is amazing. Uh, I don't think they ever dropped below 95 viewers. And at one point we were up to a, a probably two or 300 viewers, live viewers at, at one time, if not, maybe even more. But wow. Uh, yeah, the link, Michelle's fundraiser link is still going if you guys want to donate. Um, crap, I, I'm going to, I have to set someone as a moderator in here, I think. Uh, I'm going to set Connie as a moderator. Do, do, do. All right, Connie, if you would be so kind, could you please drop a link to that if possible? Uh, that would be amazing. Oh, Michelle's here. Of course, Michelle's here. Michelle can drop a link. She's got a wrench. Michelle, please drop a link to your fundraiser if you would be so kind. <clears throat> and yeah, that was a really good time. We had a lot of fun. We had uh, Vapor Shagan or sorry, uh, what was his name? It was uh, Fart Arfunkel. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, that was a trip, man. That was great. That was so great. Um, so yeah, that was a good time. We raised a ton of money, and I just wanted to say, again, reiterate this, that it just goes to show that vapors are more than just vaping. Vapors are more than just people that, you know, have clouds coming out of them at all times. <laughs> vapors are a community. We are a whole bunch of people that really care and are very passionate people. So it just, you know, kind of proves that we are powerful. We can all come together and we can raise awareness. And I don't see why we can't do this for other things as well. Um, I would love to see this happen again, you know, more towards wintertime or something like that. We might be able to do something for, uh, I don't know, I'm just throwing it out there. You know, Ken, if you're watching the replay at all or anything like that, I'm just throwing it out there. The idea, you know, maybe a food drive towards Thanksgiving, something like that. Maybe not a 24 hour stream, maybe a 12 hour stream. I don't know. I'm just throwing some ideas at the wall, seeing what sticks. But yeah, vapors are awesome people. Vapors are, are just really kind hearted, you know, the majority, I would say. And uh, they're just good people. So I think it's an awesome thing that, that, uh, Ken did and I'm just <clears throat> super excited about how everything turned out and like you know for I hate to say this but kind of the lack of preparation like we we didn't have any like organized time slots or anything but people just kind of bounced in bounced out whenever they felt like it and it just ended up working you know at one point we had like 18 people on at one time uh, and that was pretty chaotic but it was 18 really awesome people so <clears throat> Michelle, thank you so much for posting that link in chat. Uh, you guys, if you want to donate a couple more dollars, feel free. Um, but yeah, that was a really good time. Uh, I really hope we get to do that again for, for another cause because that was just amazing. And that's pretty much all of the news that I have for this vlog here. This live vlog, I don't even know what you want to call this. So <clears throat> as far as some updates... Uh, for the channel are concerned, um, like I mentioned, I, when was it? My last vlog? Or maybe it was my last live. I said that I was going to be doing more live content. So I'm kind of shooting for, you know, one live stream every week or maybe every other week. Just kind of random, kind of sporadic. Just kind of pop them in maybe on a Monday here or a Sunday here. Just, you know, pop in a live stream real quick. Not necessarily unannounced, but with kind of short notice. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, I, I want to do more live stuff because I get to really just express my feelings and you guys get to see the real raw, true form of me. So I, I don't think there's any better way to do that except for live. And uh, I get to also interact with you guys, which is awesome as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. And my voice is getting really hoarse. I'm going to take a second. I'm going to just have a vape break. If you guys have any questions, anything like that, anything you want to know, anything you want to tell me, what did you guys dress up as for Halloween? Let me know in the, uh, the, the chat box real quick. Oh, man. I need a new battery for that one. Where's my other mod? Uh-oh. I think I left my other mod out there. Hmm. I don't see it in here. 
That's not good. I have to talk about it. Mm, no. It's all right. This thing is doing pretty good. Ah, yeah. So let's see. Brian Enoch said after show. What did I? What did I say? What did I say? That's bad. <laughs> Vape squad. Oh my god, how cool would that be? It's vape squad instead of suicide squad. That'd be kind of cool. <laughs> Keegan Batcock was Caillou covered in tattoos. That is amazing. Connie was a pumpkin. Uh, punk rock pirate was a zombie punk rocker. I think that's pretty fitting. Uh, <laughs> Jesper Anderson says, I don't dress up for Halloween. I'm naturally spooky. Me too. I feel like I'm. that's my case too. I'm just kind of weird like that. Oh, okay. Yeah, I get it, Brian. <laughs> uh, Phil Lee says, I'm always here, although level of consciousness may vary. Well, you're over there in the UK, Phil, and it's late. I don't know what you're doing awake at this hour, but geez. <sighs> mm, man, I am just keep looking over and I see this. And I can't wait to get into that. We're going to do that in a little bit here. A little bit. We're going to take this step by step. Um, so, yeah, that leads me to the next thing, which I actually do need that mod. Real quick, I'm going to run out and grab my mod that I was vaping on. Uh, while you do that, guys, drop some questions in the chat. I will be going through them as soon as I get back. You better behave yourself because I'll be back in like three seconds. All right, is everyone behaving? I don't think so. I doubt it. I sincerely doubt it. <clears throat> so, yeah. Uh, let's see. DC Rackley says, what's good, y'all? I dressed up as old man working fool. Nice. <laughs> man, I wish I dressed up now. I feel kind of bad for not dressing up. I just, I don't know. I have, like, I can do, like, makeup and stuff. I can do, like, some special effects makeup. But I just don't have the time or patience for it, I guess. Whatever. Connie, be nice. Behave. I saw that. <laughs> um, and yeah, someone asked earlier this. Yeah, I got the Pixel 3 XL. This phone. I got a new phone. I know I just got the Pixel 2 XL, but this one just came out and a buddy of mine wanted to buy my 2. So I said, screw it. I'll just go for the 3. And I love it. I love this thing so much. It's so great. Um, it's it's gorgeous. I don't mind the little notch. I don't I don't really care about that. It doesn't bother me. Uh, it's so powerful. It's so fast. It's so light. The screen is so big. The camera is so amazing. Uh, so if you guys are looking for a really good new phone, definitely give the Pixel 3 XL a look because it's it's a pretty darn good phone. Um. So yeah. Real quick, I just wanted to check something. Uh. Okay, that's fine. <clears throat> Yeah, so that's something new with me. Uh, other than that, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> Not much to say. I got a new printer for the office. I don't even want to mess with the camera right now, but it's right over here. I got a new printer, and I've got labels, so I'm, I can print shipping labels right from here now, which is awesome. So hopefully my, my giveaway stuff like will be a lot faster getting out because I've got shipping boxes out here for the shop, and I can just print a label throw what I need to in a shipping box and have the mailman take it. But I feel like I've been severely slacking on Patreon and thank you to all the patrons that have stuck with me, but I'm kind of coming around now. Like I kind of go through cycles where I'll go, I'll, I'll go a couple of months and then I'll need a reboot. I'll need to just jumpstart myself again. And then, you know, I'll start getting lazier and lazier and then I'll just have to do it again. But yeah, I'm starting to come around now to the point that I can actually get stuff done. But for the longest time, I was just bogged down with a ton of reviews. I was buried under a pile of just stuff to review. And now, finally, I'm pretty much caught up. So the vape mail that I'm going to be unboxing right now, this, this week's vape mail, 
who will be reviewed over the next couple of weeks. And already I've got some opinions about the stuff that I've gotten in that I wasn't, uh, you know, or I didn't put out on my live stream, uh, which was the, the Katana kit, or I did put that out on the live stream. I did do an unboxing that was a couple of weeks ago. Um, but yeah, I'm going to be reviewing this Katana kit pretty soon. Uh, from iJoy and a couple of the other things that I got in as well as uh, the Skynet sub ohm tank um, What else? There was a couple other things in there um, There's a the MK RTA I got one of these I still haven't done anything with this So this one's gonna be a couple more weeks, but I'm gonna be building this pretty soon and uh, This will be coming out pretty soon as part of the review um, and the Skycar mod, the Segeli Skycar mod, that's one of my last Segeli ones from this round that I have to finish up. <sighs> but yeah, Phil Lee says he's got the Huawei P20 Pro, Leica lens, and 40 megapixels. Holy crap, that sounds like a hell of a camera phone there. <clears throat> uh, what's that orange thing? That guy right there, I'm assuming you're talking about my, I guess it, I, it's kind of a pumpkin. I guess, but long story short, um, our FedEx driver here at the shop uh, drops off stuff to Lego because Lego, the Lego like headquarters or whatever is kind of close by to here. So he drops off a lot of stuff to Lego and every time he drops stuff off, they basically just give him a lot of the, they call them seconds, the, the rejects essentially, something that's either missing a part or two or has a couple extra pieces or whatever. And he, he gives them to me. So I've got a bunch of these little Lego figures. I moved them off of uh, the back here, over to here. And I haven't really done anything proper with them as far as displaying them. But yeah, that, that uh, orange thing there is actually a Lego pumpkin. But I've got over here, you can see all the bags on camera here. You can see all those little bags over there. Those are all kits that I haven't touched yet. Um, I, I wanted to do, I'm not even going to say it, I'm not even going to say it, because uh, I still might do it, but um, yeah, that is, that's a bunch of Lego. <laughs> I need to clean that off. In fact, that's another thing, studio update, I might actually put shelves all the way across, because I've got so much stuff, I don't know if you guys can see this, but I've got so much stuff packed into here, I need more room, I need more room for juice. I'm going to be doing a little bit of a clean out pretty soon, so um, I'll make an announcement probably on the Cloud Crew group or something like that where I'm just going to be sending people medium flat rate boxes just full of juice because I have too much. I literally cannot possibly vape this much in my entire life, so I'm going to be sharing the wealth. Some bottles might be opened, some might be half bottles. You get what you get. I'm going to throw a ton of it in a medium flat rate, just pay me the shipping. Details for that will be all in the Cloud Crew Facebook group or something and probably on Patreon as well. But first come, first serve. And I'm only going to be doing, a, you know, probably, I don't know, three to five, I guess. <sighs> but yeah, <clears throat> Connie says she's an Apple person. I'm typically an Apple person myself. I mean, I'm recording or broadcasting this on a MacBook Pro and I've got an iMac at home. I've got an iPad and uh, you know everything Apple up to this point, but I just wasn't happy with this round of iPhones, so I just went with uh, I just went with a, a, a Google Pixel. I don't know, uh, something just kind of said, nah, that that's enough iPhone for now. Time to switch up and do something a little bit different. And I figured Google was a good route to go because I you know I use Chrome for a browser and it works really nice. So yeah, the Pixel just makes a lot of sense, but. Yeah, like I said, details for that, uh, the, the whole uh, juice haul thing, all, I don't know what you, what you would call that, juice, give, not, I hate to call it a giveaway, it's kind of like a care package or whatever, I don't know. That details for that will all be not on YouTube, uh, that's all going to go through Facebook or, or uh, Patreon. Keep an eye out on the Patreon as well because I will be posting more on there, and if you are a patron of mine, then I will be doing more giveaways and live streams soon, I swear. I'm gonna get that done as soon as I possibly can. <clears throat> but yeah, that's definitely something that I need to get done very, very soon. Because I've been just buried with other stuff. <sighs> you get what you get and you don't take what... <laughs> yeah, very nice, Michelle, very nice. So, um, what are we gonna talk about? First impressions. 
Imagine a fancy transition. First impressions. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Um, so the first thing we're going to talk about is this right here. This is the iJoy Katana kit, or you know this iteration of the kit. It comes in this big old box here. I showed you this on one of my live streams when I unboxed it, but it comes in this big old box with a whole bunch of different tanks. Um, so you get a, a sublum tank, you get a, what do they call this? A pod tank, a mouth to lung. You get a mouth to lung tank and a pod tank, which is kind of weird. And then you also get an RDA. Um, and the RDA is ca capable of doing dual mesh coils. So perhaps I will do a dual mesh coil build for Fresh Build Friday. Ooh, that's an idea. Um, We'll see. We'll see about that. But that is definitely a possibility. As far as the kit in general, as far as my first impressions of it, it's not as bad as I kind of anticipated it to be. Uh, a couple of cool things about it is, I mean, the buttons are really nice and clicky. They feel real nice. Uh, the screen is pretty basic. Nothing new or special there. It's kind of your standard, you know, vaporizer screen, if you will. Uh, three clicks to get into the menu. You have basic modes, power mode, temp mode, puff reset, uh, exit, P mode, which I haven't even touched yet, uh, MTL, bypass, and pod, and back to power. So some pretty basic modes. Um, as far as the performance, the battery life is not terrible. It's really not terrible. I was envisioning something that's going to last me an hour or two because it feels like it's a, a single 18650. Uh, maybe it's a 21700 in there. I don't know. Um, maybe Mooch will get his hands on one of these and, and rip it apart, but or, or Daniel for that matter. Um, yeah, I don't know exactly what batteries in there. I think they say it's... Ooh, don't quote me. Don't quote me. I don't know how many milliamp hours it is. And it doesn't say it right on the box. So I'll get back to you on that as far as the performance. So not bad. Really not bad. Um, I don't really like the silver color. I like the other colors a lot better than this one. But overall, I'm not that disappointed in it. And actually, I posted on Instagram today the fact that I needed this big tank band on there to keep the top closed because it leaked in, into my bag. I was really pissed off with that. But it leaked all into my bag. Just really pissed off. And uh, not not very happy with that that top cap piece, uh, the the uh, filling port there. But iJoy commented right away and said it's already been fixed. So that's good. That's good to see that they're listening to us out there and they're they're taking care of the issues that we have. So that's a good thing. Um, as far as the pod tank, this little thing here, we saw this on the Diamond Bay or whatever this one's called. VP, I don't know, I can't remember, but um, basically the big brother to that. And uh, this one actually has a coil in there. It's got this little piece at the bottom there that has the coil. Um, and it, it's not bad. It's really not terrible. So I, I hate to say this, but I was kind of going in with sort of a ne negative attitude and I'm kind of leaving with a, a slightly you know, slightly more positive attitude about it. So there's, I haven't tried the RDA yet and I haven't tried the other mouth to lung tank. Those are the last two things on my checklist before I do my final review, but that will be coming out very soon. And overall, not bad. The flavor on the tank is really good. The, the capacity, battery life isn't terrible. Charging time is pretty good. Um, it's slightly above average. I definitely put this ahead of like the things like the Nunchaku from UL. Uh, but as far as like a full fledged mod, I think this is more kind of almost novelty. Um, but other than that, not bad, not bad. Airflow is not even that bad. And I'm pretty sure the price point is on the cheaper side as well for this one. So, yeah, how can you complain about that? Next thing is, I mean, this is something that's coming up really, really soon. Probably next week, uh, I'll be doing my full review of the Sky Car mod. First impressions, 
It's exactly what you think of it. Right now, I guarantee you guys can formulate your own opinion just by looking at it. And in about three, two, one, you're going to be absolutely correct because this thing is really fiddly. Uh, this little teeny tiny dial on here controls the power. And you have about mm, maybe a centimeter of room between 65 and 120 watts. So if you nudge this thing the wrong way, you can crank your power and it is bad because I've actually hit it all the way up to 230 watts, which is the max on this thing. Very, not, I'm not going to say dangerous, but very inconvenient because you're going to burn coils that way very easily. Um, not only that, it works or doesn't work the opposite way. 65 watts down to 10 watts, you go to take a puff on it, it gives you absolutely nothing. So it's very fiddly and it's very annoying. <clears throat> Other than that, the performance is pretty pleasant. Batteries last a very long time in it because there's no screen. However, there's a bunch of lights. Don't really mind the lights all that much because I think they did it in a way that looks pretty cool, pretty cool and classy. Uh, there's no lights on the battery door, of course, but what do you expect? The, the outside shell piece here, eh, doesn't feel bad, but doesn't feel great. The button feels really cheap, very plasticky button. Not too happy about the button on this one. Um, I haven't really, I don't think there's many settings on it. I, was, I learned how to change the color of the LED, uh, L, LEDs, uh, but that's about it. I mean, the, I guess the other thing is the center, if you have it turned up, will change color and you can't really, you can like, yeah, I don't know. It's it just kind of, Meh, meh, meh. I used complain twice in one sentence. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not doing live editing. I'm sorry. I used I'm sorry twice in one sentence. That, that means I'm Canadian. And shout out to all my Canadians watching right now. <laughs> oh, man. <clears throat> but yeah, performance isn't terrible. Um... What can I say? What can I say about that? The performance isn't bad. There's just a lot of fiddly things. They 100% need to change that dial though. It needs to be more rigid or something. Have a click kind of tactile feeling instead of just a, a random sort of dial. But this dial as it stands right now is junk. Bad. Very bad. Not happy. Um, so yeah, other than that though, battery life, meh, not bad. And uh, overall, 6 out of 10, I guess, so far with that one. Um, Michelle, I'm not scary enough as it is. Boo! <laughs> My wardrobe. And R what? RDR2? <laughs> Doesn't count. Um, I'm dressed up as a vapor for Halloween. Yeah, there we go. So, yeah, that's pretty much all I've got for first impressions right now. Don't really have anything else that I've been testing out, really. Uh, I have been vaping on. Actually, you know what? That's, oh, uh, you know, before we get to what I've been vaping on, let's go over. I've got one quick shout out to do. Where was the message? Was it an email? I think it was. Maybe it wasn't. I don't remember now. Hmm. I had a message and it was interesting. Um, it was, what should I do? Like how to, how to become a, a YouTube reviewer in this day and age? Like, what do I do? Damn it. I'm not going to be able to find it. I can't remember if it was an email or if it was a Facebook message. I don't know. Now it's buried. Hmm. I'll get back to you on that one. I'm going to do that in a future video. I'm going to find it real quick and I'll, I'll do that in a future video. Let's go ahead and move on to what I've been vaping on. So first thing is obviously the Skycar mod by Sigeli with the Falcon tank on top. Now the Falcon tank is, has been my go-to sub ohm tank since I got it, period. Um, this thing has been very trustworthy. Uh, since I figured out that you have to kind of really make sure it's on there, the top is on there really nice. 
I have been loving this thing. And not a drop of liquid has leaked out of it. So A plus in my book for that. Uh, it's definitely on track to become my favorite sub ohm tank of 2018. And everything about this just is a win, in my opinion. The flavor is amazing. The vapor production is amazing. Um, mesh coils are fantastic with this one. Uh, capacity is great. Top fill, it's a screw off top fill, but it's only about a quarter turn. So it's really, really easy to, to fill this thing up. A uh, little bit of a, a complaint is the 510 drip tip, but not that bad. And this isn't even a review. I've already reviewed the Falcon tank. Why am I even talking about it? Uh, Skycar mod. Yeah, Skycar mod by Sigeli. And in the tank, I've got Lemonberry. This one has some lemon berry in there by um, Transistor E-Liquid. Transistor E-Liquid. Uh, Corey Voss sent me this one, as well as a few others. And that's what I've been vaping on in here. It's a sweet lemon berry lemonade kind of thing, or berry lemonade. Really good, really tart, really sweet. Not overly sweet, but yeah, overall very good. It's just the right amount of sweetness. Just the, the right amount of sweetness, the right amount of tartness. Not overly done. Sometimes lemonades, especially like berry mixed lemonades, can taste soapy because people over flavor them to overpower the lemon. And this one does not have that whatsoever. Some people over sweeten it to overpower the lemon. This one does not have that whatsoever. It's a little bit on the sweeter side, but not too bad. Next up, we've got the iJoy Katana Kit. Yeah, go figure. We've got the iJoy Katana kit with the sub ohm tank on there. Um, in there, I've got some strawberries down under by Vape Goons. This one is kind of so so. Really not my favorite thing. This whole line, I've tried, I've, uh, there's three of them, I believe. I've tried all three of them. And they're just kind of underwhelming. They're okay, but they're not fantastic. This one's probably my favorite. Tiny bit over flavored in my opinion. Uh, definitely on the sweeter side. Not, I wouldn't say over sweet, but the kiwi definitely makes it sweeter. <clears throat> I don't know if anyone DIYs out there, but kiwi a lot of times is added kind of as a sweetener and, and without adding like sucralose or something like that. You'll add a touch of a, a golden kiwi flavor in there just to kind of sweeten it up a little bit without making the flavor too obvious. Um, so that's kind of what I get out of that one there. Uh, moving on, we've got the Dreamer mod with the APOC on top of there. This one I badly need to rewick, and I badly need a new battery for it right now. But I will save that for later because I'm not really rocking this one too heavy right now. I've got some Vape Goons Sweet Nipples in there. Um, yeah, my favorite out of the Vape Goons uh, original range. Uh, they just renamed all of their flavors too because I don't know people were put off by the name sweet nipples I guess uh, hashtag after show there you go guys I know you guys were probably waiting for it there um, but yeah um, that one's a, a honeydew pop rocks flavor really good not overly sweet it is definitely on the sweeter side but I wouldn't call it overly sweet it's not necessarily a coil destroyer like yeah it's not too bad for uh, about 60 mils through those coils And speaking of coils, these are some lethal coils. Big shout out to Lethal Coils for sending me a nice little care package. These are his four wrap aliens. They're coming in at 0.09. And I know that's a little bit low, but I've got a 30T in there. Trust me, I know my battery safety and um, I have 100% faith in the 30Ts. The 30Ts are my new favorite battery. So I'm 100% confident in those. Um, my final setup that I've got is the Warlocks Hammer by Mark Clough. Big shout out to Mark Clough. Uh, he does the Gathering Vapor Lounge on Facebook. Make sure you guys go check him out. He is amazing and makes some gorgeous pieces such as this one here. My incredible bulk, as I like to call it, with the Elite V2 from Armageddon on top of there. Yeah, I'm having, I guess I'm having an Armageddon kind of week. Um, What's up, UK Andy? Andy's up late over there in the UK as well. You guys are sleep deprived. I'm surprised you're not all passed out after Vape Expo. Um, 
but yeah, got some 30 T's rocking in there as well. You can see the nice green fabric wrapped wires. He did an amazing job on this thing. As he does on every one of his boxes, he really takes the the time and the care and the effort that it, it really uh, it takes to create one a device like this. And this thing is fantastic. I've been rocking this for weeks and weeks and weeks straight. In there, I've got some Tango Chilling. This, I was surprised because this one, I thought I was going to like the Lemon Berry more than the Tango Chillin'. But in fact, I really like the Tango Chillin' more than I do the Lemon Berry. I don't know what it exactly it is. I love mango flavors. Mango's right up there with peach, in my opinion. And, uh, yeah, the... the Mango, the watermelon, the uh, tangerine just really plays well together. It's kind of a surprising mix to me, uh, but that's really, really good stuff. <clears throat> and that's that's what I've got for you guys this week. That's all my setups that I've got rocking. Uh, Vapor Swaggin says, hey, Nick, where's Joel? I, I don't know. Where is he? I'm not really sure. We got Elsie Builds checking in. Travis Williams, what's going on, everybody? Glad to see a few new faces checking in with me. Um... Yeah, we just went over what I've been vaping on. Oh, another thing is I'm I'm getting back my gorgeous J Max, the TVL J Max that I got uh, at this year's NVE. I sent it out to Matthew Carruthers. Big massive shout out to Matthew Carruthers. He is a saint, and he actually patinaed, force patinaed the whole mod and clear coated it as well as he did an inlay. So that should be at my house right now. Uh, I might save that. I might actually show you guys. I'm, I'm going to have to open it. I cannot resist opening that one. If it's at my house right now, I'm opening it. I'm just telling you guys right now, and you'll be definitely seeing that very, very soon. Um, but, yeah, that's going to happen in the very near future. One second, guys. Oh, man. Talking for over an hour straight um, definitely kills your voice. <clears throat> Raymond Chamberlain says, where's my wrench? Jesus Christ, you guys. I'm going to add some more moderators into my chat uh, soon, but as of right now, we've got Connie and Michelle moderating, so be careful, guys. They can time you out. Um, yeah. <clears throat> um, yeah, so next thing on the list is actually beer... <coughs> <coughs> Me dying. No, it's beer o'clock. You guys, it's beer o'clock. Um... So uh, I've got my lovely uh, opener, care of Vapor Swaggins. It says Belgium on there. He actually picked this up in Belgium. And today I've got this lovely Bitches Brew from Dogfish Head. Uh, they are out of Delaware, and they make some fantastic beverages. Uh, this one is a collaboration project uh, with Miles Davis, I believe. He has uh, a... I'm going to get this wrong. I went to the op the release party of this beer um, at one of my local bars, and they had a huge thing. They had kegs and kegs and kegs of it. And I believe it's like a collaboration with Miles Davis. I'm not sure if it's a song or if it's an album. It's probably an album. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm not a, a super fan of Miles Davis, uh, and I believe I'm getting getting the name right. I don't know. I could be wrong. <laughs> should probably do more research. Uh, let's just really quickly bring up um, this, the uh, score here. Bitches Brew on uh, the craft beer site. Uh, one of my favorites, Beer Advocate, Miles Davis. It is Miles Davis. I was right. Hey. Um, in honor of the 40th anniversary of the original release of Bitches Brew, Miles Davis's 1970 paradigm-shifting landmark fusion breakthrough, we've created our own Bitches Brew, a bold, dark beer that's a fusion of three threads of imperial... Three threads? Yeah. Of imperial stout and one thread of honey beer with gesho root. It's a gustatory analog to Miles's masterpiece. 38 international bittering units, 9% uh, alcohol by volume, and it's uh, available pretty much everywhere. I mean, I, I can pick this one up almost everywhere, like anywhere that's got decent craft beers. 
Uh, made in Delaware, USA, dogfish.com if you guys want to check that out. Um, but yeah, this is one of my favorite stouts of all time. It's a stout aged with honey. So let's go ahead. <clears throat> We've got the glass, the fancy glass here. Hashtag I drink beer out of a fancy glass. We've got the Belgium opener. Let's crack it. And I didn't really refrigerate this one. I, I popped it in about half an hour before I started the stream just to kind of chill it out a little bit, but it's just kind of almost room temperature right now. And I know, I'm sure that makes a few of you cringe, but that's that's the way I like enjoying stouts, just a little bit of chill. You really don't want to kill it with too much uh, uh, coldness. <laughs> yeah, I poured it a little bit too fast there. Oops, Not I can't always pour perfectly. But as you can see, the, the head on this is pretty dark very kind of that mocha-esque sort of head uh very frothy the lacing on it is absolutely gorgeous oh and i forgot to mention that this one was bottled on january 12th of this year so this one's been aging for quite some time um, so it's going to be a little bit extra potent it's just been sitting in the cellar in a dark cool dry place out of the sunlight and uh, yeah, it's kind of a special occasion. Occasion. I figured it would be appropriate, you know, bitches brew, witches brew. Get it? Yeah. See what I did there? Yeah. <clears throat> oh wow. Hmm. That's interesting. I feel like it's due to the age, but it definitely adds a little bit more of the honey, <clears throat> and almost a little bit of the the sourness or or almost a tartness um, takes away a lot of the bitter factor to it as well which is really really interesting it just brings out that honey flavor even more it just intensifies it by a lot <sighs> I cut that out in my videos a lot you guys don't even know but I do that a lot when I'm tasting beer <laughs> kind of embarrassing it's just a natural reflex i don't know what it is exactly but i just do it all the time um man i'm gonna have to do something real quick to to pair this with because i don't think i have anything set up for what i want to pair it with but yeah it smells almost on the musty side i know that sounds really weird It's kind of got like it's not funky but it kind of smells a little bit like musty like it's that sourness mixing with the um that stout kind of like woody uh because this is aged in uh wood barrels as well <clears throat> so you get that like kind of woodiness to it as well as a little bit of like a sharpness which i think is like the honey um adding a little bit of fermentation to it ah, it's it, it's gonna sound really weird, but it kind of smells like wet wood, if that makes any sense to you guys. But it tastes really good. The taste is really good. Um, as you can see, the lacing on this sucker is just intense. Thick lacing on it. Uh, very effervescent on the tongue. A lot of little tiny bubbles very kind of odd for a stout usually stouts are more on the smooth side this one definitely has a lot of like little little tiny popping bubbles everywhere but the flavor is really good you get a lot more of the honey i'm telling you that honey is just brought out almost tenfold to what i'm i'm used to for this flavor because typically bitches brew i've had this several times in the past Typically, it's kind of more of the still got that kind of musty factor because of it's oak aged or wood aged, uh, but it definitely uh, I've noticed that the honey was a lot more muted in comparison to uh, in comparison to now. The the honey is like a very uh, very high note for this one here. It's almost sweet, almost tart, sour ish. It's very interesting. Ah, yeah. It's weird. It's a totally different experience. If you just let, uh, you know, if you let the right beers age for a little while, they just become so much better. I've got a lot of beer coming my way as well. 
Dan the Beer Man has will be gifting me a few new beers uh, to try out. I'm hoping to get him on at some point, you know, scheduling conflicts and all that stuff. But I will definitely be uh, introducing you guys to him. We're going to do a big old beer special at some point. Uh, we were hoping to do that for episode 50, but it obviously didn't turn out that way, unfortunately. But what can you do? Ah, uh, yeah. It's very musty. <laughs> but it doesn't taste musty. It, you definitely get more of that, like, really intense, like, honey kind of flavor. Sweet, sour, tart-ish. Oh, that's so different. It's di just very different from any other stout that you've ever tried before. It's very complex. Kind of malty. A little bit of maltiness in there. Not too much, but yeah, it's definitely in there as well. Yeah, that's a good one. All right, so I want to pair this with a more of a dessert flavor. Do I have anything that I could do a dessert flavor with? Um, what's in this one? Nope. <laughs> um, what do I have for dessert flavor? Hmm. Yeah, that's not gonna do it. I'm gonna have to find something. <clears throat> I think this one. Yeah, there we go. There's a winner. So I got a dessert flavor on my dead rabbit with the challenge cap on there. Just gonna have to find the mod real quick. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna throw it on the sky car. I know it's not matching or anything like that. But we do what we can. So, ugh. Typically I, I go for the whole matchy matchy thing. Whoa. All right, <clears throat> so I'm gonna try this one with a Vape Goons flavor that I got in. It's called Goon Drip. This is like a honey gram with a little hint of cinnamon. I don't know if any of you guys are familiar with Goon Drip, but it's a really good flavor. You should definitely try it out if you get the opportunity. Um, one of the best kind of golden gram flavors, uh, in my opinion. So I feel like that's gonna help this flavor out a lot. It's going to sweeten it up a little bit. It's going to give it a little bit more texture and, and boldness and just kind of round everything out because you got that low tone of the stout and the wood. You got that high tone of the kind of sweet tart honey going on. I want to just kind of mold that together. All right, <clears throat> here we go. So the way you do it is you inhale and then just breathe through your nose as you're drinking. So... Yep. <laughs> yep. That's exactly what I was looking for. It adds that real heavy sweetness to it. Uh, but the graham cracker and like that, like I described, the woody kind of taste to it, uh, the stout taste, uh, uh, bitter, I guess you could call it, that little bit of bitterness to it uh, is rounded right out by the, the graham cracker. And that little bit of cinnamon adds a little bit more texture and it kind of amplifies the honey the sweetness in the honey there's a little bit of sweetness in the juice and ah oh, that is a really good pairing i'm really happy with that one more time really uh, real quick here oh yeah definitely liking that uh that pairing really happy with that um <laughs> does the glass get hot no it doesn't get hot uh try to be like bogan um i've been doing beer pairings for a while now i've consulted with nick on on pairings and he said go for it um nick and i get along really well if you don't if you guys don't know this because we have a lot in common and uh we've been friends for a while 
and I shoot ideas his way and vice versa. So, you know, this is kind of a common ground sort of thing. He, he told me, he gave me the green light because I asked him before I even did my first one. I'm like, dude, is it cool if I do it? And he's like, absolutely go for it. But obviously people are going to say I'm copying them, blah, blah, blah. You know what? Reviewers could do the same thing. You see 10 reviews, 20 reviews, 30 reviews of the same products. I mean, why why is it that we have to be copying each other when it comes to the other stuff that we like in this world? And beer is a passion of mine, you know? Beer is something that I love to do besides, like, outside of the, outside of the vape world. So... Yeah, um, I just, I like pairing up e-liquids with beer. I like, you know, cocktails and that kind of thing. I'm, I'm hoping, you know, further down the line here, uh, the more we get into doing these, uh, these beer clock segments, the more I can do more experimentation with it, like, you know, cocktail pairing and that kind of thing. Because, you know, I, I'm friends with Ruby Roo as well. Ruby Roo does cocktail pairings from time to time. I am totally down to, uh, you know, do some of that myself because I do enjoy a good cocktail. Uh, bourbon is a specialty of mine. I really enjoy a good bourbon. So, you know, maybe we'll do some bourbon recipes and, and stuff like that. Um, but, yeah, that, that's a really good pairing. I'm super psyched about that. Excellent. Excellent, excellent. I'm going to have to get some more bitches brew, and I'm going to be vaping on this stuff when I'm drinking it. We'll have to do that maybe for the stew or something like that. But it's really good stuff. Really happy with that pairing. So, for all my craft beer lovers out there, there's a rec recommendation for you. Absolutely uh, go check it out. It's got a 4.18 out of 5 rating score on Beer Advocates. And for those of you that don't know, I am also a part of... Um, hold on, let me bring it up on my phone. If you guys don't have the untapped app, make sure you go check it out. It's a really great way for you to keep track of all of the beers that you enjoy drinking and your friends. You can see what they're cheersing and all that. So yeah, uh, Vaping Beer Geek is my name on untapped. Make sure you guys go check me out on there. Um, you can download it on uh, iOS or Android. I'm not being sponsored by them whatsoever. I just like the app and I want to see what you guys are drinking and vice versa. I'm about to check this in in a little while here. So, yes. Um, so that was Beer O'Clock. Now we're moving on to Vape Mail time. Woo! Super excited. Yes. I've got some Vape Mail. We're going to unbox. We're going to start with this one. I uh, don't know what it is, but we're just going to get right into it. And I forgot my knife at home. So we're going to use the, the super sharp cotton scissors here. It's vape shears. Oh. <laughs> the Titan PWM box. Yes. This is going to be fun. Um, yeah. I think this is the quad battery, right? I believe. Maximum power output is 300 watts. Ooh. <laughs> um, and... <laughs> this is their 40 millimeter, I believe. I think it's 40 millimeter. 41 millimeter RTA. Let me just break this out real quick for you guys. All right. Oh boy, this is going to be fun. <laughs> what? All right, I've got to open both of these now. I got to put this set up together. I haven't even seen this all put together. Uh, but look at this thing. Holy crap. <laughs> it's literally wider. It's a little teeny bit wider than a hundred mil bottle of e liquid. Oh, wow. Actually, it's about the same. I'd say it's about flush with a 100 mil bottle of juice. Oh, my God. It's heavy, too. It is heavy. Oh, my God. How many mils of juice can this thing hold? Honestly, I don't even know. 
Oh my god, this thing is massive. I'm not gonna even bother putting it together now or anything. I just wow. <laughs> this thing is absolutely ridiculous. Oh, the threads are icky though. Oof, those threads are really not not great. Let's open up. Let's open up this one too. I'm gonna be opening everything. Because why not? Because we're here now. Let's just do it live. Yeah, that that tank is massive. Oh, the box isn't actually as big as I thought it was going to be. It's a little bit taller, but it's definitely not as wide. It's really light. Uh, obviously, there's no batteries in it, but... Don't know how the battery door comes off. I don't have any fingernails either. I don't know. Well, the button's not too bad. It kind of has a, a knob. It's a knob. I want, is that a knob and a button? Is that how you adjust it? That's interesting. Let's just put this sucker together. Oh my god. <laughs> That's ridiculous. That is ridiculous. All right, maybe this will be for Fresh Build Friday. Wow, X1 in chat if you want to see this thing for Fresh Build Friday. Wow. <laughs> it's just... Oh. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Okay. Um. Yeah, another thing is... I might actually get myself one of those Colorados uh, from Vaporgate. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that, but it's a 52.8 millimeter RDA that can fit 16 coils. Yeah. Wow. So that's something. That was definitely something. Let's go ahead and take a look at our next one here. This one's from Joytech. Paper. All right, we've got the iJust ECM. So it's kind of a starter kit thing. Interesting, interesting. Yeah, pretty similar looking to the... Wow, what's it called? Darn it. Um, Solo V2, I think. Uh, the, I did that a while ago. Oh! Here we go. The runabout. This is the one that looks kind of like a surfboard. Kind of a pod system-esque kind of thing going on. Don't know if you guys can see that. Looks kind of cool. I don't know. It's a little bit gaudy, I guess, but kind of cool. I like the, the little like inlay. Yeah. It's got cartridges. Interesting. Interesting to say the least. Let's, let's just leave it there for now. So those are a few things from Joytech that I'll be taking a look at in the next couple of weeks. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm not super crazy about the looks of it, but it's not, it's not bad. I mean, I don't know. It is what it is. It's going from one extreme to the other, from, from this to uh, something, a pod system that looks like a surfboard. But we'll have to see if it's functional. Function is more important to me than looks. All right, let's take a look at this one. This one came straight from China. There's all sorts of Chinese writing all over it and stuff. I don't know. Stabby stab. Stabby stab. All right, what is this? Feel them. Feel them pod system. What the hell is this? Really? <laughs> what? All right, I'm confused about what this is and what the purpose of it is. All right, paperwork all goes over there. Damn. Oh, I think there's two in here. That's what it is. Okay, yeah. So I've got two. So one of these will be for a giveaway. Um, yeah, let's just have a quick little little cheeky look here. 
Oh, whoa, 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 wait a minute here. All right, okay, hold on. <clears throat> okay, so this is handwritten, or it looks handwritten. I, I, yeah, that's handwritten, you guys. That's ink. Someone wrote that on this pod. Uh, uh, I don't know how I feel about that. That's a little bit weird. Why did I agree to this one? I, I don't know. Let's see. Let's check this thing out. All right, we've got the... Uh, let's just open up a tobacco pod. Why not? We'll do it live. We're having fun tonight. You guys get to witness this. If I die, tell my parents I love them. All right. Kind of interesting. This is 45 milligram. Yeah, it's a strong tobacco. But you know what? It's better than a lot of the other China, Chinese tobacco. I'm not sure where their juice is made. I'm going to have to do some research on that. But it's not a bad tobacco flavor. It's very kind of dry and earthy. Actually, let's let's just do this real quick. Yeah, yeah, it needs to be sweeter uh, for it to work as a pairing, not necessarily for, for just the pod by itself. What else do we get? Spearmint and 50 milligram. Wait a minute. Is that 20 milligram? I don't even know. It looks like yo. <clears throat> Might be 20 milligram on that one. Spearmint, blueberry, tobacco, and watermelon. But all of them are really dark. Ah. Uh. All right, for science, I'm going to just real quick try the uh, the blueberry for science, you know. Whew, 45 milligram, though. It's definitely strong. Not bad, though, for a blueberry. It's really not bad. I don't know about the handwritten pods, though. That's a little bit sketchy. I hope that's not retail. I hope that they don't do that for the retail packaging. Going to have to redo the paperwork, obviously. Get back to you guys on that one. <clears throat> but the feel -um pod system isn't terrible. It's not bad. Um, flavors aren't terrible. I mean, would definitely like to see an improvement of the uh, the pod packaging though if that's if that's a, their retail package then whoo whoo <clears throat> 45 milligram though all right moving on um this one i don't know what exactly it is this one came from asher dynamics and i don't remember an email from them they're the people that did the couple of devices. The Limitless. The Limitless Pulse is from Astro Dynamics. So, really wish I had my knife. Oh, okay. So, I'm, I'm assuming Asher works in conjunction with Sigeli. Um, okay, a little little thing from them. Uh, I don't know if that's Comic Sans font. That kind of looks like Comic Sans to me. So if that's the case, bad. <laughs> but we have the Sigeli Cronus kit with one of their tanks. Ugh, not not crazy about Sigeli tanks. And the Shikra. The Shikra kit. Kind of an interesting, classy looking device. Kind of. Whoa. That must be. <laughs> that must be the tank. Yeah, that's the tank. And this is the mod, I'm assuming, here. It's got little tamper proof seals on it. 
I don't know if we're going to look at these Segeli ones right now. Where's Segeli? You guys, if you've been watching my videos, I kind of have a track record with Segeli stuff. It's okay. <laughs> well, there's another tamper evidence seal. Damn it. I'm, I want to tamper with it. Oh, okay. Oh, please, please let there not be a stupid snow wolf, big, ugly metal thing on the back. Ah, oh, thank God. Classy, classy. No big, ugly chunk of metal on the back. That's how it's done, you guys. That's how it's done. You got this little joystick here. Just kind of neat joystick. You know, it's a little, little button on there that moves around. Button feels kind of cheap. Meh. Screen is interesting. Round. We'll see how that goes. But overall, not a bad looking little device. Definitely not as bad as the M Fang or whatever the latest one I looked at from them was. But yeah. But uh, underly impressed by their tanks lately. And these both have the same exact one. So 90% chance I won't even be using those tanks. I mean, I'll use it for a little bit just to test it out, but in my head I've already got my own sort of uh, sort of thoughts on it. Shikra is the deluxe version and it has the ladder board on it, but the same chassis as the other one. Okay. Okay. Yeah, they they I think they mentioned that in their little email correspondence that it was like, you know, the the nicer the nicer of the two. And then I have, oh yeah, so this is the Shikra and the, the Cronus. These are both basically the same mod, I believe. Yeah, they're the same mod. So yeah. I think they're the same mod. They look the same. They look almost, they, they look identical. Hold on. The packaging is totally different though. There we go. Now you can see. Pretty similar, obviously. Um... I might actually give away this one. I, I, I don't really feel like I, I want the, the gunmetal and stainless one. I feel bad for opening it now. Sorry if someone ends up getting this one. Um, we'll just leave that off to the side. And we'll put that one over there as well. And I've got one more thing here. <clears throat> I've got this. This came from England. I've got the, the Royal Mail stamp on there. I have no idea what this is, honestly. I really don't, I have no clue. And I don't know what's in here, so I don't know what if there's a good way to attack it. So, uh, I'm just gonna go with my gut here and just kinda get into it as best as I can, I suppose. Let's try to... Apparently it's fragile. Or is it fragile? Eh? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay, so I've got a couple of things here. Looks like uh, quit sticks. I think. I believe that was the correspondence I had with uh, someone over there from England. All right. Wow, we got quite a few. Quite a few. Ugh. All right, let's see. I'm running out of room on my desk. Started off with my desk somewhat clean, but now I'm running out of room very quickly. So, let's see. Okay, now I can't get anything out of the bottom. <laughs> nope, it's not happening. Gonna have to cut through it. Um, let's see. This one came from Liverpool. Where Chris is from. Chris. Chris, where are you at? All right. Ah, ah, really wish I had my knife. Damn it, the one day I don't bring my knife. All right. I think I got it. This is the part I usually cut out. Oh my god. Definitely a lot of packing tape on here. Ah. 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 Okay. Woo! Wow, we got quite a few kits here. 
I mean, they made it over, but the boxes are a little bit squished. All right, I believe that is everything. Yeah, yeah, okay, that is everything. So we have, whew, after all of that, <clears throat> the Steeped Vape Co. S1 Quick Kit. Uh, I really do like the idea behind this. Uh, I'm, I'm unfamiliar with Steeped Vape Co. Uh, I don't know if they're a big thing over there in the UK or not. But they approached me with this and it looked like a very simple kit to help people quit smoking. Um, I know Stoptober has just ended. Today is the last day. But, you know, let's continue this whole quit smoking thing uh, going forward, especially towards the new year. I want to help people quit smoking and hopefully... You know, these could be a way to do it. And they sent me a whole bunch of these things. I got six of them here. So I will be giving away five of these quit sticks at least. So, yeah, definitely going to be a lot of giveaways for, for these things. I've got a couple of packs of coils here as well. Uh, they, they managed to make it over here in one piece, although the boxes are a little bit wrinkled up. Uh, but, yeah, they, they seem to be intact, which is definitely a good thing. So, yeah, keep an eye out for this one. Uh, again, I will reiterate that I will be doing most of my giveaways from hence on forth on the Patreon. Um, Patreon is where you're going to be able to get free stuff. So if you want to become a patron, I have three different tiers that offer the giveaways. Uh, well, three plus the, the highest one. That gets you in on all of the giveaways. But... Yeah, um, this will definitely be the lowest tier giveaway um, at the $5 mark. So if you guys want to get involved, it's uh, you can just uh, patreon.com slash dailyvapetv. Um, that's where I'm going to be doing 99.9% .9 of my giveaways. So stay tuned for that. Um, but yeah, I've got a bunch of these quit sticks that I'm going to be uh, giving away. I don't even know where to put them right now. Let's just put them back over here. And, oh, the other thing is, I still have a whole box of these mini Daily Vape TV vape mats. I have a whole bunch of these things. I got the uh, Cloud Crew ones, the regular ones, and Fresh Build Friday mats. So I'll be giving away a bunch of these as well. Uh, from here on forward, I believe, as, as long as these last, I'll be giving these away on Patreon with every giveaway that I do from here on forward. So yeah, vape mats, little mini vape mats definitely come in handy when it comes to that. Um, but I said earlier on that I would be doing a giveaway on this live stream here. So we will do that. We will definitely be doing that. And I think what I'm going to do is basically push it through to Facebook because I, I hate to do this to you guys, but YouTube does not like doing giveaways. Uh, so you have to be a part of the Facebook group. And we're almost at 700 members, guys. So I said I'll be doing a giveaway every 100 members up to 1,000 on there. As soon as we hit uh, uh, 700 members on the Daily Vape TV Cloud Crew, I'll be doing an additional giveaway. But Tonight's giveaway thing will be over there, so make sure you guys go check that out. It's facebook.com slash groups slash DVTV Cloud Crew. All one word thing going on, but uh, <clears throat> yeah, uh, I'll, I'll let you guys know what you can get, but I'm going to be doing a little quick graphic and throwing it up there on the, uh, the Facebook group immediately after this stream. Uh, what should we give away? Hmm. Well, we have, uh, you know, we've got uh, Jimmy Clark, Coil Image. Uh, my buddy Jimmy Clark is offering up some coils. So let's see what I got here. Do I have any coils that I can give away? Mm, I do. Oh. Ho, ho. Ooh. I got a couple of good ones here. So I've got interlocking fralians. I've got regular fralians. And I've got some frame staples here. Let me see if I have any more. Nope, I use those. I kept those, but I use them. Um, so yeah, I've got three sets of coils here. Very, very nice coils from my good buddy, coil underscore image. Make sure you guys go check him out on Instagram. It's just coil underscore image. He has some amazing coil shots on there. 
and uh, he does some really, really good looking coils. Uh, Fralians are his newest jam, and I gotta say, these are absolutely stunning. Flawless, and I think we're gonna do three sets of, or yeah, three sets of coils. So that's it, that's one. <clears throat> hmm, what should I give away? Man, let's see. Let's see what I should give away. Who wants an RDA? Does anyone out there want an RDA? I'm feeling an RDA. I think I should give away three RDAs. What do you guys think? Let's see. I'll give away that. And give away that. What else do I have? All right, all right. So I'm gonna give away two RDAs and an RTA. Okay. <clears throat> you guys ready for this? Let's do a dead rabbit RTA in a lovely blue. Yeah, we'll switch it up, we'll switch it up color-wise. We'll do a gold recurve RDA. And we'll do a stainless warrior RDA. How about that? So we got three RDAs. If this can't convince you guys to go check out my Facebook group, I don't know what can. Uh, plus, each winner will receive a set of coils. So that's going to be awesome as well. I've got three sets of coils here from Coil Image uh, that I'll be giving away with each of those. And on top of all of that, We've got three mini vape mats. So this is actually a pretty big giveaway for me. This is also kind of to celebrate 30,000 subscribers. I haven't really came out and said anything yet, but thank you guys so much for 30,000 subscribers. You guys are amazing. Um, I just really appreciate all the support that you've given me. And for those of you that have been watching my videos for a very long time, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. Everyone that supports me on the channel and, uh, you know, is just always here for me. I really appreciate it. Those of you that comment on all my videos, thank you for that. I love the in interaction uh, that we've got going on and I want to see more of it and, you know, for you guys to keep it up. So let's just, you know, cheers to 30,000. Here's to the next 30. Ah, yes. <clears throat> yes, oh, forgot to mention, if you're planning on entering this giveaway, if you're planning on joining the cloud crew, then please, for the love of God, answer the questions on your way in. It's very simple. Uh, just a couple of quick questions, and all you have to do is answer them to get in. Jimmy Clark, a.k.a. Coil Image, is one of my admins, so he will be personally taking a look at all of your applications, if you will. So make sure you answer the questions. If you don't answer the questions, you're not getting in. That's all there is to it. So don't spam ad people. Whoa. Read through the rules. And I just dropped the coils. Uh, read through the rules. Don't spam ad people unless you tell them to answer the questions. And, uh, yeah, you'll be fine. Just uh, you're good to go. Um... So yeah, three R or two RDAs and an RTA. We've got three sets of coils and a vape mat for each. That should be plenty of motivation for you guys to get over to my Facebook group and go check that out. If you want to get involved in future giveaways, then pretty much everything except for the, the couple random ones on the Facebook group are going to be in the Patreon or on Patreon. So make sure you guys check that out if you want to get involved. Um, I will be jump starting up the, uh, the, the monthly giveaways for that as well. Uh, we're coming up on the first of the month, so I'll be doing a live stream over on Patreon, uh, probably this weekend for the first round of giveaways for that. And, you know, from there, we'll see, we'll see how that goes, but <clears throat> yeah. So for those of you that don't know, real quick, I'll just explain it. There's the five... 10, uh, I believe it's 5, 10, and $20 tiers for uh, my Patreon. $5 gets you involved with a single giveaway, and that is basically 
a Sobom tank or something of that value, like, you know, pod system, something like that. Uh, the t uh, $10 tier gets you involved with an RDA, RTA, you know, something along that nature, a little bit, a little tiny bit higher value usually for those prizes. And I'll usually throw in either a set of coils or something, uh, some cotton, etc. cetera. Um, and the $20 tier is a mod. So you get entered to win a mod. And if you enter into any of the additional tiers, if you enter into the $10 tier, you automatically get entered into the $5 tier. So you have two chances to win. And if you enter into the $20 tier, then you have three chances to win. So for that, I mean, that's, that's pretty good in my opinion. I mean, at least I thought so, but uh, wow, we got four new people already. So we're definitely climbing up uh, to 700 really, really soon. So that means an additional giveaway for that. And yeah, I've got a ton of stuff to give away, guys. Um, I've got a whole box full of stuff there. I've just got a new pod system to give away. I've got one of these Segeli mods to give away now. Um, got a ton of stuff to give away. So stay tuned for that. Um, yeah. Let's just, uh, I just need another little sip of this, this beer real quick. So with that being said, that should cover pretty much everything. <clears throat> As you can tell, I've got my work cut out for me with these new devices. I really want to figure out how to, how this thing works. Yeah, I've got a ton of new projects to work on. I've got a lot of new mods to take a look at. <clears throat> and there's a lot in store for the channel. So I've, I've, it's going to be tough. But on that note, guys, I think we'll wrap it up here. Um, real quick, I'm just going to take about five minutes or so and answer any questions you guys might have. I know there's still a bunch of you guys watching, and I'm sure there's questions that you have that you don't normally get to, to ask me. So please fire away in chat right now. I'll let you guys get that rocking and rolling, and I'm just going to have a quick little vape break. So yeah, um, Jimmy Clark, dude, coil image. I, I want more for aliens for myself though, for real. Definitely want some <clears throat> for, for my own personal use. I really don't know. Oh, there they are. <laughs> I dropped that set of coils. I'm sorry. I dropped your coils, Jimmy. My bad, dude. <clears throat> but yeah, if you guys have any questions, anything that you've been dying to ask me, anything like that, anything you want to know, just let me know. Uh, in chat right now, and I'll try to answer as many as I can. Um, but yeah, <clears throat> man, my voice is killing me. I've been talking for almost two hours straight. And I, I do apologize. I do apologize that I have to do giveaways not on YouTube, but I just really don't like doing giveaways on YouTube <clears throat> because of all their stuff, you know, all of their, their crap that they're giving reviewers and everything. I just don't want to take the risk. I'd rather just keep it off of this platform altogether. That's why I'm moving most of my stuff to Patreon. And uh, another thing is with Patreon, uh, with the normal giveaways, uh, the winner has to pay the FDA fee, the shipping fee, basically. So, um, yeah, the uh, the FDA fee is waived if you are a patron. Uh, that basically means if you're a five dollar patron, that's getting your value right there because you're paying five dollars a month for something that you would normally have to pay seven dollars for shipping for. And uh, not only that, you're getting you know a, a bunch of other stuff thrown in as well. Uh, everyone gets stickers. You know, I've got still got a bunch of these stickers. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to throw a bunch of stickers in with them as well. I've got some cotton uh, to give away. Um, uh, Keegan 
says looking for a good stab wood mod uh, pretty much just check out Esmodus. Esmodus has some amazing stab woods and they're affordable uh, if you really want to spend some money then i would take a look at the spade mod from vicious ant but i know that's probably what at least 300 bucks um, but Esmodus has some that are pretty affordable that are, are really nice mods um, and I, I don't have any of them so i don't know exactly which one to really recommend you know, there's like the, what is it, the pumper. Uh, there's a, a few other ones out there right now floating around that are actually, the, what is it, the EOS? That one is another one. Um, but yeah, those are really, really good as well. Um, and I just want to say hello to Dermont Dillon. How's it going, man? Um, Dermont Dillon asks, how are you liking Red Dead? Uh, Red Dead is amazing. The graphics are fantastic. I've been really just getting involved with it, it just kind of like enveloping me. I'm really focused in on the story and just the gameplay itself. Uh, it plays really smooth and there's really no part that like takes you out of the immersion, which is really nice. Uh, the, just the graphics are fantastic. Um, and the story is very engaging as well. Uh, it's, it's a very interesting story. I didn't, and act, I didn't actually play the first Red Dead Redemption, but I kind of know the story of I've, I've watched some let's plays and stuff like that from some of the big youtubers uh gaming youtubers out there so i've seen some footage and i've seen some playthroughs and stuff <clears throat> so i'm kind of somewhat familiar but not a hundred percent on the backstory of the whole thing but um yeah I, I hope they make a red dead 3 that would be amazing i would love to see it more kind of pushing towards the industrial revolution and kind of the advancement in technology because like right now they're they're kind of on the cusp of that uh but i would love to see some more from the series but so far really good i've got so much more to go i've got probably another 100 hours to put into it before i even make a significant headway but yeah it's really good stuff <clears throat> uh keegan says willing to pay about 400 wow well that's a pretty big budget not gonna lie uh, you can get pretty much, you know, uh, definitely the, the, the uh, what was the one I mentioned? The Spade from Vicious Ant. You could definitely afford one of those. Uh, the Squarius. Let me find it real quick. Uh, somewhere back here. <clears throat> I can't find it right now. <clears throat> Squarius mod by uh, Matt Bennett, BT Customs. Uh, he does some really, really, really nice stuff. Uh, make sure you check out those BT Customs on Facebook if you're looking around for that. He does some nice uh, stab woods and he does moon drops, which are like the glow in the dark acrylic kind of hybrids. <clears throat> uh, in this market, we see many hyped things, MTL, DL, Sub-Ohm, RTA, RDTA, Fancy Coils, Mesh, and finally Squonking. What is next in your opinion? I'm actually going to be doing a video on this in the near future, probably in the next month and a half. You'll see me do kind of a, a year-end wrap-up with a little bit of a prediction kind of vlog uh, in one of the, my Let's Fit videos. So I don't really want to get too far into this topic right now uh, because you're going to have to wait for that video. But um, I could definitely see more advancement in mesh uh, because we kind of saw like a high low and then kind of we're on the upswing again for the mesh technology. Uh, single coil technology is going to keep pushing forward. We've been seeing things like uh, the Hermetic RDA uh, and, and systems like that and, uh, you know, the drop solo uh, hitting this year, which is really cool. Um, so I feel like the single coil market is definitely going to grow. And. I will give you this. I personally feel like there's going to be another surge of series mods. I feel like series mods are going to kind of kind of make a comeback. So be on the lookout for that. Um, but that's just a little teaser for you guys. Um, let's see. I'm thinking, whoa, whoa. Uh, thinking of putting a vacuum pump together and doing my own stab wood. Whoa, that would be pretty interesting, Phil. I would love to see uh, how that pans out for you, buddy. Um, let's see. Vape break, yeah. <laughs> Man, I want to vape this so bad. Um, oh, let's see. 
yeah. So it looks like that's about all the questions I had. If anyone has any last minute questions, feel free to ask. But I'm about done here. My voice is shot and I'm gonna go and play some Red Dead Redemption 2 and probably eat some candy because I'm sure there's a big bucket full of candy at, at the house. Uh oh, nope, there it is. All right, <clears throat> coil image uh, asks, uh, I'm looking for a mouth to lung that won't kill the coil every now and then direct to lung. <clears throat> um, Breeze 2, Breeze 2 is a good option there because uh, they have two different coils uh, and it's a coil instead of a pod. So there's less, well, I guess less waste and it's a, it's a damn good system. It's a little bit finicky because you have to, you know, a lot of little pieces and stuff, but overall I'd say it's a pretty, pretty good system. Um, if you want to see like something like just simple pod status, then I would say check out the, I mean, the Orion, the Lost Vape Orion, that's a little bit pricey, but um, I think it's a pretty good system from what I've heard. It's it's at least par, if not above par. I mean, some people are saying it's a little underwhelming and all that, but I, I feel like there's a lot of like kind of leeway with that one there. It is expensive, but it is a very nice pod system. Uh, and if you are looking for on the cheap, then I would say check out the Vapresso Zero. That one's a really good little pod system that we have right here at Voltage Vape. Um, and the, the Smock Novo actually, from what I've heard, is actually pretty good too. Um, yeah, so that about does it for me, guys. I'm going to wrap it up here. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Thank you guys so much for the continued support. This is kind of a one-off thing. Uh, I might do, like I said, little random live streams once every week or every other week or something like that. So keep your eyes peeled on the channel. Uh, if you haven't already, turn on notifications. It's a little bell down there next to the subscribe button. That would be amazing. And don't forget to join the Daily Vape TV Cloud Crew group on Facebook. Connie's been posting links all over the place here. So uh, thank you for that, Connie, as well. <clears throat> oh, jeez. All right, Rod D, real quick, says Bonza versus Drop Dead versus DJV. DJV? RDA? What's the DJV? I'm not familiar with that one. Recurve mod rage for a win. <clears throat> um, let's see. Bonza versus drop dead. Eh, I'm not really super stoked on either of those. I'm gonna say mm, drop dead by a hair. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say drop dead by a hair. But really, it's a very close competition with those two. Uh, the Drop Dead deck is definitely a lot less finicky than the Bonza deck. I know people are going to fight me on that one. Um, versus DJB, I, I don't know what that is, so I can't really answer you there. Recurve Mod, I did a review on that. You can check that video out. Rage, again, did a video on that one. They're both pretty darn good. Uh, no major problems. <clears throat> so, yeah, that's about all I've got for you guys. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me, and as always, vape on.